Hello, everyone, and welcome to UGA Sports Coaches Corner, where we have guest Mr. Ben Reeves. Coach Reeves has taken over for Adam Clack there at Milton High School in Alpharetta, Georgia. Coach Reeves, thank you for joining us here on UGA Sports. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Uh, excited to talk to you today uh, about some Milton football. No doubt. And and I guess we need to start off the, you know, some congratulations in order there. You taking the the job, I guess, just over almost two months ago now. And when it comes to taking over for a successful uh coach like Coach Clack and and and, and a program, I mean you've been at Milton for five years as OC, but uh that having your name on the door outside the head coach's office is a little bit different. Yeah, definitely a, a different seat I'm sitting in now and, and a lot of different conversations I'm having to have, but Luckily, it's been an easy transition for one, just having uh, the consistency of being here, knowing the kids, knowing the administration, knowing our routine uh, has made things very easy for me just to switch from one office to the next. But secondly, you know, I'm I'm in a good situation. I'm not taking over a program that's struggling, you know, over the past five years through Coach Clack's leadership, we've elevated the program to, to a national presence and it's doing better than it ever has. So, um, you know, I, I'm not dealing with a lot of problems that, that some coaches are walking into and, I, and I'm thankful for that and hopefully I can keep it rolling. And part of keeping that rolling is getting good people around you and you've made some some hires here and none other that, that Georgia fans would be more interested in than your new wide receiver coach and passing game coordinator, Terrence Edwards. Uh, talk to us what it's been like getting uh, – Coach Edwards aboard and uh, just what that's going to mean for the Milton program going forward. Yeah, that was a huge hire for our program, for our kids. Uh, as a Georgia alum myself, something I'm, I'm very proud of getting him over here. And, you know, it, it all comes down to, to relationships, not only with the kids, but with the coaches. And, and Terrence and I worked together in Miami at an all-star game event a couple of years ago where I was the offensive coordinator and he handled the receivers in the past game. And we, we just kind of clicked, you know, it was a, it was a great relationship. We're very similar in, in our coaching techniques and mindsets and it clicked. And we just kind of jokingly way back then talked about, Hey, you know, maybe one day we'll be on the same staff together. And when I got offered the head job, you know, I wanted to call him up and, and see how serious, how serious those jokes were that we were making. And, uh, you know, fortunate that we've been able to work it out to get him here because, like I said, he's he's the best in the state. But Milton, we're we're one of the best programs in the state, and and that's the caliber of coaches that that I want to have around our kids, and it's the caliber of men that I want our kids to be around because not just he's not just a great football coach. You know, his his character is what really shines through, and who he is as a man really shines through just when you're around him for for the first five to ten minutes of meeting him. And uh, he, he just checks every box, and I could not be more excited for our kids and our community to be able to welcome him on board. Yeah, it's exciting stuff there. And another exciting thing inside the state of Georgia just as a whole, whether somebody's a, a, a Georgia fan, a Georgia alum, or, or not, just a sports fan in general, seeing that national title run that Georgia went on, uh, I can imagine being a, especially a new head coach in uh, Georgia high school football it's an interesting dynamic uh, as you've dealt with Georgia staff for a while, them recruiting Milton's kids. I uh, said you've been there for a while, but it has to be a little bit different dynamic now with Kirby uh, coming into the school to visit with a, a national championship ring on his hand. Absolutely. And, you know, I kind of joked with Coach Smart and, and Coach Luke when, when they were here, and I said, I don't know uh, if I'm more excited that y'all won the national championship or as a Georgia alum, I never have to hear again that we haven't won anything since 1980. I said, but regardless, uh, you know, I, I congratulate you on both. But, you know, my relationship with, with UGA is deep. Uh, I actually went through the, the PE cohort with Todd Hartley. So he and I, we've, we've kept in touch over the years. And having him back in Athens is uh, was an instant connection for me. And I've got to know a lot of the other coaches as well. Uh, it helps that, that we have good players here at Milton that they've wanted to come see but we've been able to strengthen our relationship. Um, I'm taking my coaching staff to the March coaching clinic in Athens. And, uh, you know, we're going to continue to build those bonds and hopefully we can get some, some Milton players up there to them. Now, one of those, and we'll, we'll start talking right now about some of the specific guys that you guys have, uh, none other making more waves than LT Overton, who has, 
Uh, you won't get to coach this fall because he's elected to reclassify and join the class of 2022. You were the transition was taking place when LT was kind of mulling over that decision of uh, the transition from Coach Clack to yourself. Talk to us about what that was like being a head coach and seeing a player go through that that thought process, and also you know what all goes into that in this age of NIL and and you know, transfer portal to how college football is changing. What goes into that process uh, with a guy like LT? Yeah, well, for one, uh, you know, I think, and I don't want to speak for him too much because LT, he does a great job of really thinking about uh, his his own decisions and he's got a pretty good support system around him and his dad's the AD at Kennesaw State, so he knows the ins and outs of the business. But, uh, you know, back probably mid-season is when we first got wind that, this is a possibility and something that he would probably want to do and take advantage of. So, you know, that decision goes back a little deeper than just around when I uh, took the head job Uh, It's something that, you know, he didn't want to really talk about until he was sure he didn't really want to announce during the season because that would distract from what our team was trying to do. And at the time we were trying to win a, win a state championship. Um, And and that just shows his maturity. Um, along with so many other things that, that he was able to put the team first and put his decision on the back burner until uh, this winter. But uh, yeah, I, I hate that I'm not going to get the chance to coach him, but I'm thankful that I've been around him for the past couple of years because not only is he a great football player, but he's just a great young man. Uh, he, he's so driven. You know, it, he just he knows what he wants to do. He knows what he wants to be. He wants to be a first round draft pick in the NFL and be one of the greatest ever to play there. And there's no reason why he can't do that. You know, a lot of kids, uh, I don't think that they're ready to, to jump to the, to the next level uh, as fast as he is, but he is ready. You know, he not only physically, but mentally, he's ready to do it. And we fully support his decision and look forward to, you know, him, him killing it at the next level because he is someone that's going to be able to come in and make an instant impact uh, on anybody's team in anybody's locker room. And I have no doubts that this is the right decision for him. And um, just looking forward to see it all all play out the way that I know that it will. With LT, I know a lot of people are asking at the next level, where exactly does he fit in terms of position-wise? Kind of weight was in between being an interior and an edge guy. What do you think he ends up at? Like, what do you think the playing weight ends up at? And what have some of the college staffs expressed that they would like to see him do at the next level? Yeah, well, the good news about him is that uh, it it really can go either way, which obviously is why you asked me this question. But I think uh, ultimately he wants to be be an edge guy. He wants to be a guy that can come off the edge, show his athleticism and go get it. Because uh, I don't know if you know this, I'm sure you do, but he, he's also a tremendous basketball player. I mean, he gets oh, up yes. and he can get it done on the hardwood. <laughs> um, he'll throw it down. And that athleticism, you know, you, it would be a shame if it wasn't coming off the edge. He could definitely put on the weight and he could uh, do some damage in the interior and plug that up. But he just has a once in a lifetime skill set that, uh, in my opinion, is best coming off the edge and, and raising hell and, and getting to some quarterbacks. The cupboard won't be totally bare, by the way, with uh, LT moving on. You have some pretty good defenders left in there with uh, Bryce Thornton being one of them that is really getting a lot of a lot of consideration by schools like Alabama, LSU, Georgia uh, themselves. And, of course, Bryce, you know, is a Georgia legacy with his dad having played at, at Georgia. So just he's a guy that really exploded onto the scene this past year, wasn't as – coming into this past season wasn't as highly, you know, coveted, but now it seems like everybody's coming out of the woodwork to try to get uh, Bryce Thornton. Talk to me about what he brings to the table as, as a player and kind of what you've, you know, experienced throughout his recruitment so far. Yeah. So his Georgia ties actually go deeper than his dad. His mom was a basketball player at Georgia. And uh, from what I hear, she was hell on the court. So he, uh, you know, it's in the bloodline for him to be as elite as he is. And the thing about him is that, uh, you know, a lot of times coaches and, and programs can get caught up in, in some vitals and is this guy six foot, is he not? But at the end of the day, if you can play football, you're going to shine on the field. And that's one thing that Bryce came out and showed is it doesn't matter what his height and his weight is. Uh, he's a freaking football player. He's a dog on the field and he's not going to lose too many one on one battles to anybody on the football field. And he just further proved that 
this season. And, um, you know, he, him coming back and like LT, he's a, he's a great kid. He's a great locker room guy. So not only is he going to have an impact on the field, but he's going to make our locker room better. He's going to be able to mentor our young guys. And, uh, you know, he's, he's a huge offensive weapon. I, I tell people all the time that if he just played running back, he'd be a five-star running back. He'd yeah. be the best running back in the state. He's that athletic, that dynamic. And he's, he's one that's in the discussion with LT of, you know, who's the best player ever to come out of Milton. Uh, he's one that's, that's definitely got to be in the discussion because he's got the skill set to go and be and do whatever he wants to do. And he's got the mentality to go along with it as well. High praise for sure there. Uh, another player that you're looking to get a lot out of that the vitals and the measurements aren't a problem with is Robert Billings. Uh, I mean, this is a guy who's long. He's 6'2", six, uh, six maybe 6'3", six uh, 185 pounds north of that maybe now. He's a guy that will come down and hit you as well. Um, you know, with Robert Billings, also he's seen his his recruitment just skyrocket. Talk to us about him, you know, at that safety position and what he is going to do for your uh, Milton defense and maybe where he has, is in his recruitment right now. For sure, yeah. He's one that uh, opposing offensive coordinators better circle and, and know where he's at at all times because, like you said, not only athletically is he dynamic and can go track the ball, but when he comes to make a tackle, he, he's coming with bad intentions. You know, he's just not trying to get you to the ground. He, he's bringing some thunder behind it, and he takes pride in that. And uh, the one thing I love about him is that, you know, he's he's soft spoken. Uh, you know, we talk to him in person, but he has a switch that he flips whenever he hits the football field. And he's just a good example of somebody that trusted us as coaches, trusted the work, trusted the process, you know, knew that he was going to be a big time division one player, but didn't complain because he wasn't playing varsity as a freshman and he wasn't playing varsity as a sophomore. He just trusted the program and the process, and now he's reaping the benefits of that. And I, I love success stories like him because it couldn't happen to a better person. I know as a ninth grader, he came in and he was a quarterback, which is the position that I was coaching. And I think I sent him uh, to the safeties one day and told him that he, he can thank me later. So hopefully that thank you's <laughs> coming coming uh, here soon. But, uh, you know, he's got, you know, 20, 30 offers, and he's going to start taking some visits here soon and see if he can start narrowing that list down because one thing I am working with those guys on and, and all of our guys in general is just offers. You better treat them like gold. You know, if, if you find somewhere that you want to commit to, you need to go ahead and commit and solidify that spot. Don't wait till December so you can flip some hats around because um, it may not be there. You know, you need to pick a home now if you know where that's going to be. And hopefully I can help him do that here pretty soon, uh, potentially even by the summer. With the, I've got an offensive guy that I'm going to go to next, but with those three defensive guys, would you say that Georgia uh, specifically is that maybe some some ground to make up on those guys with Dan Lanning having left? I know Coach Lanning was very involved with the the prospects over there at Milton. How has that transition been of the Georgia coaches kind of coming in and and trying to uh, make up for that rearranging on their staff? Yeah, for sure. That was definitely a big loss recruiting wise, obviously, because uh, I didn't get a chance to be around Coach Landing until this last recruiting window opened. But just talking to him for, for five, 10 minutes, you, you see why kids are instantly attracted to him and want to play for him. So, you know, he, he's been talking to LT, I think, longer than the other two. So if there's ground to make up, it would definitely be with LT. Uh, you know, Bryce and uh, Robert were, were just getting to know him and uh, so I don't think there's as much ground to make up with there. But, you know, the, the Georgia staff, they're, they're smart. Obviously, they're good coaches. They want to keep the best kids that are in Georgia in state. And they're doing everything they can do to build those relationships and get those kids on campus and, uh, you know, try to see, see how they can make sure their names in those final, final couple of schools they choose from. And coach, lastly, you mentioned that Bryce and LT are kind of in the running for maybe the some of the greatest to ever come through Milton. This next guy that I'm going to talk about may have something to say about that in uh, Debron Gatling. Uh, he is unbelievable. He's a class of 2024 guy. Uh, I believe had seven over 700 yards receiving. Had, Lord knows how many touchdowns for you guys this year. But when it comes when it comes down to it. He's an explosive player and someone that that uh, Todd Munkin and the Georgia offensive staff definitely has their eye on early. 
Yeah, for sure. And he's uh, he's one that every time I I'm reminded of what grade he's in, I, I just get a smile on the inside. So I'm like, he he is young. Yeah, that's right. He has been starting since a freshman, and I remember his first game. He took a slant to the house for about 40 yards, and he's done nothing but um, fulfill his role just like a varsity player should from that day forward. And you know, it's rare in seven A football that a freshman can can start on a big time team, a big time program and have success. And, uh, you know, we have a policy here at Milton that if, if you're not going to be a starter or an immediate backup that rolls into the game consistently, we're not going to bring you up. So those are few and far between here as well. But he's, uh, you know, he checks every box. And the thing about him is there's a lot of guys that can can run and catch and, um, you know, create guys uh you know be good off the line but the Bron, he's able to catch the ball outside of his framework and keep his balance and keep his speed like nobody i've seen before and that's the x factor around about him is that if you just put the ball somewhere close he's going to be able to go get it it doesn't necessarily have to be a perfect throw by the quarterback um and you can't say that about every every big time receiver nowadays but he's uh you know he's gonna have a big year this year he, we were very run heavy last season, so his stats don't do him justice of what he could have accomplished. He probably could have had double the yards and double the touchdowns if we threw it every time. But we had a big O line and a six three running back and a dual threat quarterback, and we just committed to pounding the rock last year. But this year is going to be a little bit different. He's going to be able to show his skill set and, and really shine. And uh, you know the the DB coaches as well. They say he might even be the best corner on the team. So he's just a guy that can get out there and do it all. You know, he tries to talk me into throwing the ball and playing some quarterback. I don't know if we'll really get there, but, um, you know, we'll at least let him mix it up and play a little defense every now and then. I know Coach Edwards probably has to be excited to have a weapon like that uh, in his first season there at Milton. Absolutely, absolutely. So I guess lastly, just wanted to, you know, touch on with, with DeBron Gatling, what has the messaging been from the Georgia side? I know he's a couple years away, but I know they're already trying to to get in there on that, that recruitment. What's the messaging been on what they, they kind of see for him and why they want him in their program? Yeah, they uh you know that they, they've expressed that they, they loved him from a or from an early age and and like with the other guys, they want to try to keep the best kids in state that they possibly can. And similar to Coach Lanning leaving, you know, him and Coach Hankton had a relationship yeah. that um, now someone else is going to have to step in and build with DeBron. But the good news is DeBron does love the university and the program and everything about it. And obviously the fact that they just won a national title and there's no reason why a couple more could not be in their future soon is, is very attractive to him. You know, he is a guy that uh, is from Michigan originally. So he he's open to, to go in some places that – a lot of kids in the Southeast aren't open to going to, so they'll really have to do a good job of recruiting them to, to keep them in state. But uh, like with all of our kids, that's I know that's their goal, and it definitely uh, – those words match their actions because they're working hard to keep them. Absolutely. Well, Coach Reeves, thank you so much for joining UGA Sports Coaches Corner and talk to us about Milton football. We're excited uh, to, to kind of cover all of these guys, and you have much more than that that we just mentioned that, that we could go into, but only limited amount of time today. But uh, just tell everybody before we close off here, what does uh, spring practice look like for you guys, and, and do you have a spring scrimmage coming up, all that kind of stuff? Yeah, so we start spring practice on Monday. I believe it's May the 2nd, and we're pretty much going to go 10 days straight. You know, we'll have a, a film and a lift day in there and do a little Saturday practice. But we're going to end uh, on May 13th playing North Forsyth at North Forsyth at, at 7 p.m. And it's going to be a good time just to come out and not only see the guys that we talk about, but see some other young stars that people don't quite know about yet, but they will. You know, we, we got some big-time guys tucked away in our 25 class and uh, some, some 24s in there as well that people don't know about, but they'll know about them soon once they step on the field. So I'm excited to start showcasing them and let them have some fun playing another team. Absolutely. So if you want to catch some big time GHSA football and see some ma future division one college prospects come out uh, to that game at North Forsyth on May 13th, uh, thanks to coach, Ben Reeves here of Milton Football, and we will catch you next time on UGA Sports.
Coach's Corner.